Hi, Christian friends. Welcome back. We're going to continue our study of Philippians, and we're going to keep rejoicing, even on a day like today. We'll give thanks to the Lord today for him giving us everything, even when it seems like you have nothing. Verse 8 of chapter 3, Paul writing to the Philippians. He had just said in verse 7, I consider the things I used to think were so important. I consider them a loss for the sake of Christ. And now he almost repeats it. Listen for the difference. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. We'll stop right there because we'll pick it up there next time and go into verse 9. They sound very similar. It sounds like Paul's repeating himself, which seems like a foolish thing to do when you've got just a a little bit of space on a, on a piece of parchment and you're trying to pack it full of all of the messages you want to send to the Philippians. Um, but it's not a repetition. It just sounds like that. There's the, the loss and the gain idea. Those words are repeated from verse 7. But in verse 7, he was talking about the things that made him so special, the things that he could boast about if he wanted to. His upbringing, his education, his uh, previous jobs, maybe similar things that you, you look back on your life and you say, I could boast in this, I could boast about this, but I'm not going to. And that's what Paul said. I consider those things a loss for the sake of Christ. Here in verse 8, he's taking it a step farther. I consider everything. What is more? Wait, he says, take this even a step farther. Go even, go even more. Everything is a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. You, you instantly jump to, well, not everything. Well, what about, my, what about my family? What about my church? What about... Uh, this, is, this is where it gets tough. Paul would be willing to say, yes, I would consider those uh, detriments if that's where I'm finding my value. If you, a month ago, <laughs> two months ago, were finding your value in your job, you're in big trouble now if you've been cut. However, if your value has been found in Christ all the while, and you had a job, and now you don't have a job, your value is the same. You just don't have a job. If you lose a family member to an illness or to whatever cause, um, and your value and your whole worth and your whole world was wrapped up in them, and you had nothing more in your life, and you lost them, you're done for. You're toast. But if your, 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 your future, if your value, if all of your worth is found in having Jesus your Savior, in gaining, gaining Christ, in gaining this assurance that, yes, he is my Savior, and I know he's forgiven me, and I know he loves me, and that's the same yesterday and today and forever until I see him in heaven, then the Lord gives you all sorts of good things, and you see them, and you count them as blessings, and sometimes he gives them, and sometimes he takes them away. It allows you to hold the things of this world in a bit looser hand. It takes maturity to be able to say that about things and people that we love. But it's true. I consider everything a loss, including the things that other people would say, boy, you must be really proud. Look at what you've accomplished. And you yourself have an ego that would love to seize on that and say, yes, look at what I have accomplished. Or looking ahead, look what I hope to accomplish. Count that as a loss. Count it as a detriment if that were ever to rise above the level of, of, of priority where Jesus sits in your heart. The surpassing worth. This goes above and beyond. You offer me anything this world has. I've got something even better. It surpasses. To know what? Know that Christ Jesus is your Lord. And for whose sake? I've lost all things, says, says Paul. He's in jail because he's been talking about Jesus. He, he probably doesn't even have his, his tent-making supplies that he used to keep himself um, supplied with a living. So he wasn't a, a burden on churches. He didn't have solid friends because they kept having to go or carry a letter like this or run and, and do something else or they couldn't stay. Uh, he, he was alone often and he was in jail. Um, you and I are not in, in jail. Uh, I, at least I, I haven't heard from anybody who's watching this from a jail. We're in a quarantine and we're in a distant kind of time. Um, but consider this. Consider this today. You have lost some things, at least temporarily. 
um, you, you, you're losing some things maybe by the moment. Um, but, but there's something that surpasses any single other thing in this world, and that is knowing Christ Jesus your Lord. The upcoming verses, stay tuned and keep tuning into these over the next couple days because these verses are so intertwined. He's going to say that what does it mean to, to find, uh, uh, the, to, to know Christ Jesus my Lord? It means to be found in him, to be found uh, surrounded by him and protected by him. What it means is to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and his sufferings, and, and also we rise just like he did. That's what it means to be found in Christ. So even, consider this today, even as you may be losing some things, this day, this week, over this next month, you have gained something that surpasses and far exceeds all of them. You know Christ Jesus, your Lord. And let that be your comfort when you don't have much else. Give thanks to the Lord for he's good. He's allowed himself to be, to be known by you. Until next time, God keep you safe and close to him.